Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. Today, uh, my name is Ruth. Today, we are going to discuss on the topic electrochemistry. The support topic for the day is uh, dilute solutions. So, we were looking at preferential, preferential dis discharge. And previously, we looked at the location or where the, the ions are placed at the series, at the electrochemical series. So today we are going to look at the concentration. Concentration also affects what is going to be discharged. So we'll start with dilute solutions, and then the next lesson we look at concentrated solutions, and then we are going to compare the two. Did you get the same the same solutions when we were using dilute solutions or when we are using concentrated solutions? So remember, this is the electrochemical series. Do not forget. Although we are still going to use it still in this concentration. But as we are going to see the distinction when we make the concentrated solution. So cations or anions whose concentration is higher is preferred. It's preferred if the ions are close in the electrochemical series. So we will start with dilute solutions. Let's start with dilute sulfuric acid. So the first thing is to determine the ions in solution. So we have the sulfate ions the hydrogen ions, the hydroxyl ions. So hydrogen ions are produced by the sulfuric acid and also water. So those are the only ions in solution. So at the anode, which is a positive, all the anions go to the anode, that is sulfate ions and hydroxyl ions, and then cathode, all the cations, so hydrogen ions. So if you can remember, we already discussed this, since the reaction, the solution is dilute, so there is nowhere the concentration is going to affect it unless we concentrate it. So sulfate ions and hydroxyl ions, we will prefer sul uh, hydroxyl ions because it uh, has a higher tendency of losing electrons than sulfate ions. So the equation at the anode is going to be for hydroxyl ions discharged to give two molecules of water plus oxygen gas plus four electrons. These electrons travel to the cathode. The cathode has only one hydrogen uh, ion, so it is going to be preferred automatically. So four hydrogen ions gains those four electrons to give two molecules of hydrogen gas. So you notice more, as you can see from the diagram, more hydrogen is produced than oxygen. So as you, as you, as the reaction continues, you notice that the amount of water is being used up in this reaction. So the concentration of the acid is going to increase as the reaction continues. Another example is dilute sodium chloride. So let's look at the ions present in this reaction. So we have sodium ions, we have chloride ions, we have hydroxyl ions, we have hydrogen ions. Next, we are going to look at the anode. Anode, all the anions will be attracted on the anode. The anions we have are the chloride ions and hydroxyl ions, and then the uh, cathode. We have the hydrogen ions and sodium ions. So if you were to decide uh, which would be discharged at the anode, we want the one that has a higher tendency of losing electrons. So if you go back to your uh, uh, electrochemical series, you notice that chlorine is, have, is more positive than hydroxyl ions. So hydroxyl ions will be preferred, although we will see a different observation later on when we look at the concentration of the sodium chloride. So hydro hydroxyl ions will be preferred. So you have the hydrogen ions discharged to give two molecules of water, uh, oxygen gas, and for electrons. This travel to the cathode. So the cathode, this is where gain of electrons occurs. So we will take the one that has a higher tendency of gaining, meaning the most positive. So you notice sodium is a metal, so its electrode potential will definitely be negative. For hydrogen is 0, 0.00. So hydrogen will be preferred. So hydrogen will be discharged at the cathode. So for hydrogen ions, will react with four electrons to give two molecules of hydrogen gas. 
So the observations you notice as well in this case, more hydrogen gas will be given off, less oxygen will be given off. And then, of course, as the solution progresses, the concentration of sodium ions and chloride ions increases uh, as the reaction progresses, because this is still the electrolysis of water. Let's look at another example, electrolysis of dilute hydrochloric acid. So the first thing, we identify the ions in solution. So we have the hydrogen ions, we have the chloride ions, we have the hydroxide ions. And the, and the hydrogen ions. So if you look at the anode, the anion, so we've got the anode, that is the chloride ions and the hydroxide ions. And then at the cathode, the hydrogen ions, because it's only the only cation. So at the anode, we have done this again. So the hydroxide ions would be preferred because they have the highest tendency to lose electrons. They are more negative. Or less positive. Chloride ions are positive but so positive in comparison to the hydroxide ions. So it becomes four hydrogen ions, two molecules of water plus oxygen gas plus four electrons. And then these four electrons travel to the cathode where the hydrogen ions gain them. So four hydrogen ions plus the four electrons to give two molecules of hydrogen gas. So in the same manner as well, more hydrogen uh, gas is going to be produced and then less oxygen is going to be produced. Uh, the, as the experiment progresses, the concentration of uh, the acid increases progressively. So let's do one question to conclude on the session. So 100 centimeters cubed of two molar sulfuric acid was electrolyzed using the setup uh, represented by the diagram below. Write an equation for the reaction that produces gas L. Describe how gas K can be identified and then explain the difference in the volume of the gas is produced at the electrode. So one thing you notice in there are so many clues that you've been given. First of all, we can start with the ions in solution. They have the hydrogen ions, the hydroxyl ions, and the sulfate ions. So at the anode, which is connected to the positive, so this is the anode, the anions, which is the hydroxyl ions and sulfate ions, migrate to it. And then we have the cathode, so in this case, this is the cathode. Are you able to tell it's the cathode because it is connected to the negative part of the electrode? This one. So this is a cathode. So at the cathode, we have the hydrogen ions. So we've been told to write the equation for the reaction that produces gas L. So basically, I've been told to, to the equation that produces the oxygen gas. So it's four hydroxyl ions discharges to give two molecules of water plus oxygen gas plus four electrons. Describe how gas K can be identified. So gas K is the four hydrogen ions gain the four electrons to form two molecules of hydrogen gas it can be identified by introducing a burning splint at the mouth of the test tube containing the gas. It will burn with a pop sound. Especially when you're explaining a chemical reaction, it is good to be precise of what you're going to do. And then explain the difference in volume of gases produced at the electrodes. So more hydrogen gas is produced at the cathode, or you can say twice 
has compared to oxygen gas at the anode. So the ratio, remember, of oxygen gas to hydrogen gas is 1 is to 2. So there is more hydrogen gas produced or twice hydrogen gas produced at the cathode compared to the one produced at the, uh, at, at the anode compared to the one produced at the cathode. So that brings us to the end of the session. I'll uh, see you in the next lesson as we now look at the concentrated solutions of these solutions.